this has never happened to me before. If you're running Intel's 12th gen chips right now, go and update your flipping BIOS now. Look at that. Yep. That's the absolute best score I have ever reached. As much as I love Intel's 12th gen for creators, because it's got very good CPU performance, the iGPU for video editors is a killer feature, and the efficiency cores keep the efficiency in the, you know, idle kind of process of the CPU very, very much down. So there's a lot to love about the 12th gen, but there's one thing that we still have to talk about. That is XMP with DDR5. I've got 128 gigabytes gigabytes of DDR5 installed over there and pretty much every single motherboard advertises that it supports 128 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. I can pretty much promise you I haven't been able to run XMP at the advertised speeds on any of the motherboards when I've got four sticks applied. So basically, even though those sticks over there should be getting 5200 mega transfers per second, you're never going to get that. Let's talk. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So we're going to do a few things and see how it's going to improve and if it's going to improve and if we can run uh, XMP on four sticks. But basically, I have the X PG caster RGB RAM over there. This uh, is four times 16 gigabytes or so 64 gigabytes in total, and it should be running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. So right now you can see that I am actually running uh, these four sticks at 4,000 megahertz. Okay, the XMP is not applied. This is kind of the default DDR5 speed, which is interesting because Crucial, if you haven't seen Crucial uh, RAM actually, Crucial runs the default speed at 4,800 mega transfers per second. So there's no XMP applied, but it just runs 4,800, which is interesting. But pretty much all of the overclocked memory, because XMP is actually overclocking the memory, they run at like 4,000 megahertz. 4,000 mega transfers as default. And as you can see, I have completed this Puget Bench uh, benchmark here with that 128 gigabytes and it just completed no problem. I mean, first of all, look at those cores. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous like even thread rippers can't really keep up with this this is the 12900ks and 3090 ti in there plus 128 gigabytes of that's the balls of to the wall system have you seen that build go check that out anyway it completed it no problem but here's the thing i don't have the latest bios version actually on this uh, motherboard so we will be updating the bios to the latest version to see if anything is improved so as you can see, we are running BIOS version 1601. This is a Z690 Pro Ad Creator Wi-Fi. So this BIOS is 2004. And the thing about this BIOS is, which actually Asus says on their website very clearly, is that when you update to this BIOS, you can't actually reverse the BIOSes in there anymore. Just because I think this BIOS has like 13th gen support as well. So we'll see. Um, what we're gonna do with that. Now, I have tried running uh, two XMPs on this BIOS before, the previous BIOS, which is the 4800 mega transfers and the 5200 mega transfers. The 5200 mega transfers sometimes doesn't even boot and the 4800 mega transfers can get to Windows, but uh, then certain benchmarks just crash halfway through and it's, it's just not gonna work. For example, that uh, DaVinci Resolve, I wasn't able to complete that with 4800 mega transfers. So if we look at the BIOS firmware here, uh, this version does not allow rolling back to previous versions, not even via USB BIOS flashback. Memory support. Let's have a look. Kingston 64. Okay, A data uh, 4016G. This one here. As you can see, this is SK Hynix um, chip brand actually but a data is you know overclocking it basically and reselling it this is actually in the qualified vendors list of uh, ram so it is there but the interesting thing is it says socket support one two so there you go that's the one over here uses micron look one uses sk hynix see they're pretty much the same kit but you can have different brands Mine is Micron here. So as you can see, even our Kingston RAM here is in the qualified vendors list. 
So it, sh it says it should be supported, but even when the 12th gen got launched and I spoke to some of the like high-end Kingston engineers in the factory and they said even they haven't got four slot XMP working with that. Now that was the beginning of platform. We are almost a year later now at this point. I'm filming this on 27th of November. Sorry, September as you can see and we'll see what the difference is. It's training the memory there at the moment. It's on yellow. Okay, BIOS is updating. Okay, Voila, we are in the new BIOS. BIOS version 2004. Okay, F7, if we go here, um, the overclocker. If you go XMP1, so that's 5200, okay? 50 XMP2, now let's go XMP1, and then 4800, okay? Let's see if we can complete this. 48, actually, we'll try 5200 first, okay? So 5200, let's see if we can even boot. All right. Are we getting a boot? Ho <laughs> ho! Well, would you look at that? We are on Windows at 5200 MHz, 4 sticks, 128 GB. Now that's the first for me. Let's hope that this was because of the um, actual uh, BIOS update. So we're going to check that in a moment. We're going to start running this. Okay, as you can see, DaVinci Resolve quit unexpectedly already. See, boom. Can complete it. Let's start it again. And I bet it's gonna do exa- Okay, it's crashed now. It's funny it doesn't crash like the, the OS, like Windows still runs, but it crashes the programs. So let's see if, if this works. So this is PUG Bench 5200 mega transfers. Let's go. Okay, I might be uh, proven wrong. This has never happened to me before. And this just shows how important updating your BIOS pretty much monthly is when you adopt to a new platform. Like if you're running Intel's 12th gen chips right now, go and update your flipping BIOS now. Look at that. I mean, this is probably the highest score I have ever reached. 1,579. Yep, that's the absolute best score I have ever reached just because we have the XMP enabled. Look at that, 128 gigabytes, 5200 megahertz. Previously, I've had the integrated graphics on as well. So let's put the integrated graphics on because maybe that's going to make a difference if the iGPU is on as well. But as you can see right now, 128 gigabytes, four sticks there, the XMP works. Now, another thing that I have actually observed while testing the 12th gen doing like hundreds of benchmarks is that when you have the sticks cool of the ram then they're much more likely to run xmp so what i sometimes had to do was because some of the benchmarks had you know 4800 megahertz and um, you know speeds and that some of them thought 4000 i added an extra fan just to sit on the gpu to blow onto the RAM and then I was able to complete much more, um, you know, benchmarks because now we actually have the voltage regulator of the DRAMs on the actual DIMM rather than on the motherboard. So the motherboard doesn't actually control the voltage, but actually there's the kind of voltage thing is on the actual DIMM sticks. So to keep the DIMMs cool is even more important. RAM still 52, UHD 770. Let's try this again. I think we just got a blue screen of death. I'll have to watch this back because I actually missed this, but there we go. If you've got an iGPU enabled, we just found out that's going to be a big no-no as well because it just doesn't, doesn't work as you can see. Now another thing into the equation, this is pretty much the, like the best case scenario because the CPU is the highest quality silicon, like the 12900KS should be, I mean, yeah, you can get a lottery and get like the silicon, um, you know, actual quality a little bit better in some of the 12900K CPUs, but this 12900KS should, in theory, be like the highest quality. That means like it should have the most reliable memory controller. That's what I've usually seen as well. So if you're running like 12700K or 12700KF or 12700, something like that, then this situation might be even worse for you. In fact, this is like the best what I've seen on 12900KS actually compared to the other, you know, 12400, 12500, 600K, i7s, any of these 
this is like the best one I have seen. Now I want to try it one more time if it's going to complete the Photoshop benchmark. But this is what I was telling people about in my actual benchmarking or stress test video that you run as many benchmarks as you can. If it's stable among them or amongst your workloads, most likely it's going to be stable. That's again with new drivers installed for the iGPU as well. Let's run the benchmark, see if it's any different. Okay, as you can see, we have actually completed the test now again with 5200 and iGPU enabled when the iGPU or Intel graphics drivers were updated. As you can see, it's very important to update your drivers and BIOS. To be honest, I didn't expect this and it's quite surprising. I do still think that this is a bit of a gamble and we're going to do the DaVinci Resolve test here again to see if that goes through because if it completes that as well, then I can pretty much say that, okay, we have our stable XMP working at 5200 mega transfers as this one. But previously, as you saw, we had a blue screen of death. Okay, as you can see, nope, it isn't quite stable. Here, DaVinci Resolve benchmark is, is not running through. I'm gonna send the report to Blackmagic so they can do whatever the heck they want with this. What we wanna try next is 6,000 mega transfers. Let's see if that works. Okay, I'm taking the 32 dims, you know, per stick out and they're actually quite, quite warm there. They're not like hot to the touch, but I bet they're about 60 degrees or something like that here when I'm feeling them. You can really feel that that they are warm. 6,000 mega transfers going in. Let's see what happens now. Now this should automatically run into that 6,000 mega transfers per second kind of speed. Let's have a look. Okay, we're running at 5,200 megahertz, okay? But these are 6,000 dims. XMP 6,000 is enabled now. Let's see. See, that's very interesting. BIOS is saying that we're running 5200 megahertz, but uh, this task manager is saying we're running at 5200 megahertz, mega transfers per second. Yeah, interesting. The memory clock is 2600 mega transfers per second, which means, you know, it's double it, so 52. Very interesting. Interestingly, even though it showed 6000 megahertz or mega transfers, it wasn't running at 6000, so now we are. Okay, that's taken for ages to train that memory. Goes back through CPU check and then RAM check. Let's see if we can do 6000 on four sticks. GPT header corruption has been detected. Okay. It's basically not pulsing. Let's see if we can do anything else. Let's go again. It's obviously not corrupted just because I put some RAM in. See, he just does not want to boot with the XMP at 6,000 mega transfers. Goes back to CPU, RAM, CPU, RAM, CPU, RAM. Some kind of boot. As you can see again, we're in the safe mode. It just does not post with 6,000 mega transfers. Now, I'll show you a thing because um, I'll take the power off and watch this. I'm going to take the second channel sticks out. Okay, there we go. And watch this. It's gonna boot now. I am sure of it. White light, green light, and we are booting. Let's get that Windows logo going. There we go. And basically now I could easily run DaVinci Resolve test there with 6,000 mega transfers. Let's have a look. See, 6,000 mega transfers. Usually that would like crash quite fast. So it's not so much to do with the capacity. As you can see, I can get four sticks, you know, 128 gigabytes kind of running at 4,800 megahertz and 5200 mega transfers kind of worked but not in all scenarios what is the conclusion what have we learned today first of all it's very important to update your bios and drivers it's super super important as you can see it can cause a lot of instability or with the update they also uh, improve the stability they improve the dram you know kind of voltage stuff with their motherboard stuff you know just to keep it simple and secondly running two sticks on intel i have had no problems 
okay? I have zero problems when I have had XMP on, doesn't matter which frequency with two sticks is work. Add exactly the same sticks at four, and there we go. There's no XMP working anymore. It's unstable anymore, like now, and, and it's just a, a gamble, okay? And this is what I've heard from like Kingston, you know, I'm, I'd have to ask them for an update, but the Kingston CEO or whatever, the head of, you know, the labs or what's, what was his job title again? Some very, very high-end guy from Kingston. Um, I managed to get to him just because when I was essentially testing the 12th gen, I was one of the only ones in the world who tested it with four sticks because all the kits were 32 gigabytes and two sticks, if you remember. But because I was a creator, I really just managed to get another one from Kingston. So I had four sticks, okay? I had four 16 gigabyte sticks and I had absolutely tons of issues and because nobody else as you saw all the reviews they were testing with two because most people just do gaming stuff but because of creators I think 32 gigabytes is a massive bottleneck in terms of the benchmarks so I wanted to have 64 and with 64 none of the XMPs was working so I was using just you know 4,000 mega transfers per second. And then the Kingston guy actually told me as well, that's how, you know, I got there because it was like an issue for everybody because even the like guys, like even Asus and a lot of the guys hadn't tested it with four sticks. And then the Kingston guy said, look, we have basically had no luck with four sticks XMP. And they said that we have had maybe one or two boards that sometimes work, but it's not stable. So it's not stable. And here's the thing, even if you look at the RAM kits that you can buy, there is not a four kit RAM that you can buy a DDR5. It just isn't there. You can't buy one. If you remember DDR4, you could easily get a four kit of DDR4 RAM that has been, have been tuned kind of like four stick XMP where you can get all four slots um, filled, whether it's 128 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, I mean 64 gigabytes. But for DDR5, we are not there yet. We need to talk about this because for creators, at least for you and me, we need more than 32 gigabytes. And if you want more than 32 gigabytes, in fact, more than 64 gigabytes, because we can still get 64 gigabyte kit, you know, 5,200 mega transfers per second. But if we go above that, like the actual rated RAM for the motherboard, which is, um, you know, 128 gigabytes, then we're not going to get the advertised speeds. And another thing I would recommend here is if you are a creator and you're buying RAM for your system and you're looking to get more than, you know, 32 gigabytes, then first of all, get two sticks and 64 gigabytes, okay? Don't get four sticks if you can, if you want to get up to 64 gigabytes. But even in my workflow, I can see that in video editing, 64 gigabytes can be a bottleneck. Just because when you're loading a project, you're opening a project, boom, first of all, it loads it into the RAM and then kind of spreads it into different places. Places. But for that, you need a lot of RAM. I can easily see my 64 gigabytes, boom, capped out. If you need more than 64 gigabytes, just buy basic crucial like 4800 mega transfers RAM. Don't buy any overclocking RAM because you're paying more for absolutely nothing. You're never going to get these speeds and it's still an issue. We need to wait for the manufacturers, whether it's um, X and B, A Data, Kingston, any of those guys, we need to wait for them to talk with the motherboard manufacturers and with Intel to actually get this to work because none of them have actually got four sticks enabled. Now, I have heard that some guys manually can get it to work and they've managed to get it work when you go manual, some settings here and there. But the thing is, a lot of creators, I don't know about you, but I'm sure I'm right here. The thing is, you're not gonna start manually tweaking your PC. What you wanna get is you wanna build your PC. You've spent enough time building the PC. You don't wanna troubleshoot your PC. You wanna put the things in, build it, get it running and then go. You don't wanna tune it all the time. For example, if you buy a car, you don't wanna constantly be under the bonnet like, oh, flip an egg. This is not working. If it's a hobby and you go in racing, yeah, you need to tune your car all the time for racing. But if you're using it to go to work, you need to get to work and get back and get the work done, right? And as you can see at 6,000 mega transfers per second, we're actually here on um, DaVinci Resolve. It's already past the point that it usually crashes with the 6,000 mega transfers. Even though this XPG RAM is absolutely fantastic, looks good, okay? Adds a lot of uh, RAM there, quite minimalistic as well. If you need more than 64 gigabytes, 
don't get four stacks. Okay guys, I'd love to know your experience in the comment section below if you're running 12th gen Intel or AMD Ryzen 7000 now and I'd love to know your four stick XMP issue. Okay, can you make it work? Is it working? Let me know. I'd love to know from you in the comment section below. Check out these XPG RAM or the Kingston Fury Beast RGB or the Kingston Fury here that we didn't even try but I've tried it so many times with benchmarking. I promise you the test is exactly the same. It's basically this, but it just runs slower. It might get to the 5200 mega transfers, but then boom, it's just gonna crash at some point. It's not gonna work. So check them out in the description below. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>